Now I will get to the main business, which is in introducing our speaker, who is Professor Robin Daddle. She is an associate professor and chair of the Department of Geography at the California State University, Sacramento. <laughs> she received her BA from UC Davis and her MA and PhD from the University of Minnesota. Her research areas are historic preservation and urban social geography, hence this is an appropriate subject for her. She teaches courses on urban geography, economic geography, Europe, and an introduction to geography for future K-12 teachers. She recently worked with Elaine Korn at Capital Public Radio on Around the World in 30 Blocks. Uh, it's a series that features restaurants, foods, and people along Broadway. And so right now, I would like to introduce our key speaker for this evening, Professor Robin Dowdle. I was 15 years old, 
And my mother, who's in the audience tonight, the very first thing she did when we moved here was to sign my sister and I up uh, to be part of an experimental interracial day camp sponsored by the Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. And this brought together African American kids, largely from Del Paso Heights, and uh, white kids from Rancho Cordova. Um, and by kids, I mean little kids and also teenagers. And so the Father's Day incident and that um, experience were my introduction to Sacramento. In 1977, I was uh, working on my master's thesis on the beginnings of the historic preservation movement in Sacramento, and I went to a meeting uh, between a couple of city council people, Callie Carney and Lloyd Connolly, uh, representatives of the Housing and Redevelopment Agency, uh, local preservationists and neighborhood representatives to talk about what should happen to the old buildings along 35th Street. And what happened was that many of them were torn down in order to build affordable housing. After that point, the redevelopment agency became more sympathetic to a um, an incremental approach to neighborhood investment and to historic preservation. But having been at that meeting and seen, um, seen this, the decisions that were made all those many years ago, and I still have my yellow notes from that meeting, I was very interested to come back to Oak Park and understand what had happened in the intervening years. In 2003, the city did hire historic environment consultants to do a uh, inventory of historic resources, and that, hearing that, I decided I would um, start working in Oak Park a bit with my students and try to complement that fairly traditional architectural history with some oral histories um, by having people discuss with students their uh, memories of specific places in Oak Park. So those are sort of key dates in my own personal odyssey to get to know Oak Park. So there are three main uh, sources of information that the walking tour booklet uses and that we drew on. The first group up here are the fairly traditional printed sources, primary and secondary. Uh, looking at things like city directories, photographs, uh, building permits, which reveal some interesting things about uh, how people adopted to the automobile age in Oak Park. Many permits were taken out over the years to add a garage, for example. Um, and uh, uh, Clarence Caesar's 1985 thesis on the African American history of Sacramento is still the definitive work on that topic. So much appreciated, all of the, these folks who came before me. Then there's the personal recollection part that I've already alluded to, uh, walking and talking with knowledgeable uh, current or former um, residents or business people in Oak Park. And then the images that Marsha referred to that, are, uh, that, that belong to the Center for Sacramento History. And you'll see when you get your booklet that it's a little bit unorthodox in that the pictures are not all of the buildings. Uh, they, in fact, are, uh, there are a lot of pictures of people, um, of uh, different kinds of illustrations of what life was like at different points in Oak Park's history. And we hope to complement uh, people's experience of the landscape and what they're seeing as they walk through Oak Park with this um, quite diverse set of images. This is Dr. William Lee, the founder um, and publisher of the Sacramento Observer, and he was among the people who walked and talked with the students. Why did I take the walking tour as the form of output of this project? I think it has a broad appeal uh, to both local residents and to uh, people from other parts of the metro area, and also to people from out of town. So I'm hoping that just like people who go to New York City will take walking tours of Harlem, we will have people in Sac Sacramento visitors taking walking tours of Oak Park. I think actually getting people physically out in the city and not just reading about its history um, from, from books or watching movies or whatever the alternative, uh, more virtual experiences are, is really important and really powerful. Uh, working on walking tours does have community building potential. Uh, uh, develop, develop
developing them brings a lot of diverse people together. Uh, just look around the room tonight. Uh, and leading them can also be community building and, and participating in them, to have people walk through their neighborhood and talk about what they're seeing and what they've experienced. There is some economic development potential here. Uh, again, walking tours can draw people from outside the neighborhood and they may buy a cup of coffee or uh, have a sandwich or learn about a business that they find interesting. And finally, uh, having more people out and about in Oak Park as elsewhere is a good thing. Uh, the more people who are out, the more interesting it becomes to others, the more eyes there are in the street. And also we know that it's healthy to walk. And while people don't exactly um, hoof it on walking tours, um, it nonetheless is, uh, is out there getting everyone moving. So there are many good benefits to this kind of activity. So there are four big stories that I want to highlight. And we'll go through this relatively quickly, and then we'll get to the, um, the images that uh, you'll see up on the screen and you'll have later in your booklet. So uh, one of the big stories is the early development of Oak Park. We still have a lot of building stock left over despite the, um, the demolitions that have occurred. So we can see the scale at which Oak Park was subdivided from open land. Uh, it did have a period of speculation when people bought up the, uh, the blocks and then uh, more or less sat on them for a while. So the plat, uh, platting occurred in 1887, but building, most building didn't occur until a while later. Uh, this was made possible in part by an innovation in transportation technology in the 1880s, and that is the streetcar. Um, the amusement park, which many of you are familiar with the history of, Joyland was built in part to draw people into the neighborhood, particularly on the weekends when the streetcars wouldn't be uh, so heavily used, and to get people to come out here and perhaps fall in love with Oak Park and uh, purchase a piece of property. Uh, Oak Park became part of the city of Sacramento. I'll show you a map of that shortly. Uh, we got a lot of investment in the neighborhood, both private and public. Once we get annexation, we get things like sewers, sewers and water lines and paved streets. Uh, a complete working class community was created, and by that I mean it was not just housing, but in fact, uh, quite close to Oak Park were some major centers of manufacturing. Uh, for example, the Libby McNeil Libby plant opened in 1912. Uh, we uh, also had the state fair. Um, uh, moving here in uh, 1909, uh, the WP, the Western Pacific Rail Yards, uh, opening in about, uh, about the same time. So significant jobs were available to people not too far from Oak Park, and we got the development of uh, Main Street in Oak Park, which was the two blocks of 35th Street between Broadway and McClatchy Park. 